opening day and opening reception for Compact and Collectible, an exhibition of vintage pedal cars. We are very, very pleased to uh, present this show. It's been several years in the making. Uh, it probably, probably was prompted, um, well, I know it was prompted in 2008 by a very special exhibition that we held, the Victor Schreckengost exhibition, Legacy Exhibition. And from that point on, we've been thinking about creating a special show that saluted pedal cars exclusively. Um, so about two years ago, the, the show took shape. And uh, from that point on, we've been pedal to the metal and we've been making it happen. The puns are just too much fun in this show, so get ready for a whole slew of them. Uh, I do want to recognize several people who are here this evening because of their contributions and great spirit and incredible uh, effort in making the show happen. Uh, we would be nowhere without our sponsors. And I do want to recognize Judy and Marcus Robbins who are here for making all aspects of the show happen. Uh, I also do want to recognize our lead curator, collector, and uh, really what probably one of the best industrial designers and, well, I could go on for a long time, Chuck Tremontano. So. We're going to hear a few words from Chuck later on, but uh, Chuck saves the day in every way possible, and he does it in a very stylish way. Um, Chuck thinks about a problem that we might be having at the museum, comes back the next day, has created three possible options, and uh, brings them in and just implements them, and we can't get over it. So uh, one day I think we'll have to have an exhibition of all the tools that Chuck has created to make our exhibitions happen. Uh, because they really are extraordinary, so that needed to be said. There are 68 cars in this show, and uh, they come to us through very generous collectors. There are six collectors that have contributed to the show. These cars have never been shown all together before, and they will never again. The reaction has been unbelievable, and uh, I think three times, maybe four times today I heard, oh, I can't believe it. And they would look at a fire entrance and we would look at a fire entrance and say, I wish I had kept that. The appeal of the show has been remarkable. Uh, I do want to spotlight our collectors and contributors. And um, please hold your applause until the end, but they do deserve a big round. Joe Brugliera, John Oliver, Bob Fisher, Joe Pizzardi, and Paul Yorkis. They are all wearing flowers. So if you see someone wearing a flower, it's um, their VIP tonight. So, a round of applause for our collectors. There's one thing I want to do before I int introduce Chuck, and that is to thank Carrie St. Pierre for creating that amazing cake. Patterned after the Royal Deluxe 1955 pedal car, we're going to let John Oliver cut it. Um, and we can all enjoy. So thank you so much. I'd like to introduce Chuck Tremontana. Needless to say, we want to thank again uh, Marcus and Judy Robbins for uh, sponsoring this exhibition. One of the toughest parts about putting on an exhibition of, of this nature is to finance it, and they so generously stepped forward right in the very, very beginning which took so much pressure off of putting an exhibition like this together. Mem has done absolutely incredible work right along. She had the foresight so long ago to recognize that these are not toys. These are truly works of art. Uh, and thank you, Mem, for that. And what an incredible staff here at the museum. Photo. So if you're wearing a flower, you're up here. 
We have six major collectors who have contributed to the show. Pedal cars are children's toys. In their heyday in the 1950s, they were referred to as juvenile wheel goods. And they were um, created by really five major manufacturers. One that we spotlight in the exhibition is the Murray of Ohio Manufacturing Company. Um, Murray created cars from really the late 20s all the way through the late 60s. These are all metal cars that are in the show. And then the advent of plastics really changed the industry. So metal cars really aren't made the way they used to be. They are as um, sort of vintage collectibles, but the original cars were really made from the 20s through the late 1960s. Uh, all of these, barring two, are original cars Many have been restored and others are in their true original condition. We have a spotlight on industrial designer Victor Schreckengost. The museum was very lucky in 2008 to create a, an exhibition of Victor's work and the wonderful work of his students. And Victor was a pedal car designer for Murray, Ohio. We had an exhibition of his work which included pedal cars and other industrial design products as well as fine art work. And we got the fever probably back in 2008 thinking it would be great to expand this component of what Victor did and how he revolutionized really the production of pedal cars uh, by having a special exhibition dedicated to just that vintage toy. The cars are spanning time from 1920s through the late 1960s. And we have 68 cars in the gallery. The cars have never been shown as a group before and once the show is over they will go back to their collectors. We started to plan this exhibit about two years ago. My professor from the Cleveland Institute of Art, Victor Schreckengast, actually designed most of the pedal cars that are here for Murray, Ohio. He was their design director from 1938 to 1970. He designed several million pedal cars that they produced. He also designed 60 million bicycles that they produced. And even besides that, he would go back to the Cleveland Institute of Art and teach three days a week. One of the collectors has about 47 pedal cars here. Another one has nine pedal cars here. And we have about four prime collectors. A uh, third pedal car collector has five and I have a few of my own. The presentation is, is a very sophisticated presentation for what you might think are children's toys, but they're really not the uh, Boston uh, Museum of Fine Art. They have one of these pedal cars on exhibit as fine art. My wife and I were friends of Victor Schreckengas, the designer for Murray, Ohio, for 30 years. So I'm not exactly a pedal car collector, but uh, collect Victor Schreckengas work. He designed for Murray, Ohio, designed dinnerware for American Limoges and Salem Potteries in Ohio. He worked in this, during the Second World War on radar recognition. Just a, a genius as far as an industrial designer, painter, and a, and a masterful ceramic sculptor. People talk about the good old days as far as automobile design. These are the kind of things that people of my age grew up with in the 40s and 50s. And, uh, just very nostalgic and fun to look at. I've been collecting pedal cars for years. The way I've always looked at them is that they have a kind of persona to them and an, and an art object to them. And um, it's just something that has always captured my eye with everything being thrown away today or recyclable or plastic to go back over the years and see something that was made so well and crafted with such love and attention. Um, I've, been, I've been collecting for about 35 years now. I have 47 cars in the show. Um, it's not my entire collection. I still have about a dozen more at my house and um, probably another dozen at my father's house. I started collecting probably in 1985. I saw one in, a, um, in an antique show and I ended up buying that particular car. I still have it, my very first car. And then it just like any other thing, it caught, it caught on with me. And I became focused on um, pedal cars and some of them I restored. Most of the cars that you see here this evening that are unrestored are mine because again, I, if a car has been used for 60 years and it's been left out in the rain and you know, run into walls by kids, et cetera, that's, that's the beauty of it, the provenance of the car. It's a tough call when to restore a car and when not to. My rule of thumb is if it 
if you can't read any of the decals on the side, and it's almost unrecognizable as a card, then I'll give it to a restorer to, to, to redo over. But barring that, I generally try and take what I have and work with it to bang out some bumps or whatever and keep the original. Because I always want to know who bought it, why they bought it, where did they live, how long did they have it, why did they give it up, did they put it in the trash, and how did it finally end up on my shelf 60 years or 60, 70 years later. So it's the story behind it. And I haven't met a person here tonight who hasn't said, I had that, or I used to have one of that, or my neighbor had one of that. So each one has a personality, each one is different from the other, and it's just truly a form of art. A number of them have brought pictures of themselves or cars that they have in their garage or in their barns or in their cellars that they've had for 50 years that have meant something to the family. And they bring them here tonight and they've asked and anyone who has a white boutonniere on, what is it? Um, what is it worth, naturally? And are you interested in buying it sometimes? Um, right now I have plenty of pedal cars and I don't need them, but it, you'd be surprised how many people have these types of um, cars in their attic, basement, or whatever. My favorite car is not here. Uh, my favorite car was my first one. It's a 1941 Pontiac, and for some reason I didn't want to bring it. Um, it's, it's at my home, and it's not in my cellar, it's upstairs. And I, that was a labor of love. That's what really got me um, enthralled about pedal cars, so that's my favorite, my first one. I think that the staff here at the museum has done an absolutely wonderful job. And I know that the work that they put into this, from the platforms to just cleaning of the cars, to the wording on the walls, to the pictures that they've been able to assimilate, a lot of labor of love, volunteer hours, and it's just amazing what they've been able to bring here tonight. And I would just encourage everyone out there who's looking at this tonight to come down to the Attleboro Museum, take a look at what's here, bring your children so that they have a, an appreciation of what we had when we were fortunate when we were children. The Attleboro Museum is really a hidden gem. And a lot of people don't know it's here, number one. Number two, what they put on on a regular basis. So I would ask everyone to kind of put that on their favorites on their computer and just be aware of the schedule that they do have. It's really a wonderful take on a rainy Saturday or Sunday or when you have nothing planned. Come on down, take a look, and here you're going to see 100 pedal cars that span from the late 1920s all the way up to 1964. I've been a pedal car collector since uh, 1989, uh, and I've got this is one of uh, my so-called prize pedal cars that I have. It's a 1935 through 37 Auburn, made by Steelcraft, uh, and it was made to resemble the car as much as possible. Uh, however, this, these were very expensive car. Uh, this is the type of automobile that uh, would almost take a, a full paycheck back then to buy for a kid. So they had to be very, very wealthy to own this type of an automobile. <laughs> I met up with a gentleman in Hershey, Pennsylvania, who uh, restored um, pedal cars, and he was also involved with Hallmark. They were making those little pedal cars that came out in 1989, and he was the designer for Hallmark to make those cars. And he had a car that I really liked, uh, and he got me going. I bought that car, and within a year's time, I probably owned 20. Uh, I went everywhere finding these cars, anywhere I could go, any auction I could go to, any car show I could go to, anywhere I could try to find one. And I've gone through probably 100 pedal cars, and I got about 30 right now that are, you know, kept upgrading and whatnot. Again, it's, it's just, a, uh, just a hobby. As you can see by the, by the moldings and everything, like this part here is stamped out. They stamped it, they designed it, and they had molds made and they stamped it. Then the sides were stamped individually, the back was stamped individually, and then all the thing was all assembled. And then the biggest thing is, is again, they, they make these things very, very detailed with the headlights and the grill and the hood ornament, windshields. Um, but they, the integral work that goes into making one of these is it's art. It's definitely art. It's f phenomenal. I absolutely love them, you know? <laughs>
one of the tractors that I brought tonight was made by the Ertl Company. It's a replica of a garden or lawn tractor and different from many other tractors that Ertl made that had the John Deere brand on them is the front wheels are spread wide apart so that it is a much safer toy for children as compared to the typical tractor which has two wheels up front but very narrow and has a tendency to tip over. Part of being a collector is having the joy of sharing your collection with other people and they selected these two pieces over here, two tractors and a uh, taxi cab that had I had in a box. It had never been out of the box since, uh, we think, 1973. Some people enjoy collecting things. Some people don't want to collect anything. I enjoy it because I learn from the things I collect. I enjoy sharing them with other people. I collect toy trains and um, railroad badges and all kinds of other unusual items. But it's fun and I'm learning all the time and I, I enjoy that a great deal. The reaction of people are, oh, I remember that one. Or I had that as a child. Or, gee, I didn't, I didn't realize that there were so many different types of pedal cars. And several people asked me about these two tractors and I, um, one of the tractors, we used to live in Maryland and one of them is from, I bought when we were in Maryland. And they were surprised that there's such a diversity of styles of tractors that were made. And what's nice about them is that they were made in the United States, in Iowa, uh, by um, a company that's still in business. As a curator, you make long range plans, you think of a concept you bring it to the board of directors and say, what do you think of doing a pedal car exhibition in two years from now? And if the board approves it, you present a budget to the board, and if they approve the budget and it can be financed, then you go out and try to find the materials you want to exhibit. In this case, we started literally two years ago and found the first collector who introduced us to the second collector. Uh, we, we work with moving companies to get an estimate of what it's going to cost to move the pedal cars back and forth, insurance companies. Uh, we work with uh, companies who's going to construct the pedestals and the forms and all that. Uh, and all that has to be planned, and then particularly what has to be planned is the last few weeks before the exhibition, making it all, all work you know, in a very timely manner. If somebody's interested in pedal cars, you know, you, you can buy an old pedal car for a few hundred dollars and you can spend thousands of dollars restoring them. Uh, and there's an interest there because it used to be you would buy an old pedal car and restore it to look pristine condition to increase its value. But of late, collectors have more interest in leaving them in the condition that you find them and, and they would have higher value then. And you also have to be very careful not to buy what we call reproductions that come in from China and Korea and Mexico. You want to really know the manufacturers uh, and the particular ways they made the product and, and then to look very carefully for labels and just to be sure it's an original, not a reproduction. Look up names like Victor Schreckengast. Uh, look up the names for some of these major companies that years ago produced pedal cars like Murray, Ohio, like Gardner, uh, AMF uh, International, uh, and look up their individual bios. Uh, that's a good way to learn. I must say a word about Schreckengast. For those of you who don't know the name Victor Schreckengast, Victor uh, was a remarkable man. Uh, historians have called him the Leonardo da Vinci of America. Uh, he taught at the Cleveland Institute of Art three days a week for over 70 years. Uh, he was a major design director for Murray, Ohio, uh, the, the major pedal car company in the United States. Uh, he directed their design department from 38 to 1970. In that period, they made over several million pedal cars he was responsible for all their design work. They also made 60 million bicycles. They were the largest bicycle manufacturer uh, in the world, and he was responsible for all that. He also had a mad passion for doing dinnerware, other toys. He would design 
uh, printing presses that were three stories tall. He designed the, the interiors of the first nuclear submarines, the most remarkable man. Uh, he headed up the design department for the Cleveland Institute of Art. I, I'm at a loss to say how long, but if I said 60 years, I don't think I'd be off the mark. Uh, Dan Cafaro, would you come forward, please? Uh, Dan here is the chairperson uh, from the Clayton Institute of Art. Very quickly, um, Victor was uh, fairly humble uh, in his work. Uh, he, he wasn't in New York, he wasn't in a big design city, uh, and he quietly made a significant impact on the bottom lines of companies, on the way that people enjoy design. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to be in the position that he created um, and to attempt to continue that legacy. Uh, I, I was, uh, when I was asked to, to make the trip out here, uh, th there was no hesitation. First of all, I, I lived in New England, uh, spent the bulk of my career in New England and miss it, and so that was a great chance. But also the chance to be part of celebrating, telling the story of this legacy that is uh, fairly unknown uh, to a lot of people. We're at CIA, we're continuing to try to do that. Our hope is that as just as kids enjoyed these things at one time and adults now enjoy collecting them, our hope is that our students are going to design the next generation of things that will be cherished, enjoyed, collected, um, and, and continue Victor's legacy. Um, so I'm very happy to be here. I'm very grateful that uh, the, the museum is celebrating this legacy and that we have alumni who are promoting it, willing to invest, and willing to show up on a day like this. Thank you. We have other alumni from the Canadian Institute. Right? I'd like them all to come forward for just a moment. Anyone here who knew Victor Schreckengas who went to the Cleveland Institute of Art? 